Yo, welcome back to the channel. If you have a four cylinder Jeep from earlier years with an AX5 manual transmission like this, you have what's known as an internal slave cylinder. And like in our case, if it goes out, you have to drop the whole transmission just to change it. So today I'm gonna to show you how to swap to an external slave cylinder from later years, which allows you to service it without dropping the transmission. Now laid out here is everything you're gonna need from a 94 and up AX5, starting with the bell housing for the external sleeve. Make sure if you're getting it used like this one, it has the ball pivot stud. Need a bearing retaining plate, need your clutch fork, and the retaining clip for the clutch fork that goes on that ball pivot. This was also used, it came with a throw out bearing, but pick up a new throw out bearing. And then lastly, you'll need your master and slave cylinder, preferably in a kit like this with a new line. Now I got all your parts together. You're ready to drop your transmission. I obviously already dropped the transmission, but I filmed everything for you. So let's check it out. We'll start here on the inside. Both shift knobs need to come off and they just have a jam nut on the bottom. The knob threads right off. Then you take off the jam nut, both of them. And then the boots are uh, screwed in. This plate that has screws all around the perimeter. So once you have all those screws out, both of these boots will come off. Then what we'll do is take out the remainder of these screws to take this plate off like that. And then the plate can come out and then this inner boot thing can come out too. Now from here, you can either try and get this stupid shifter off of here, it's a pain in the butt, or just remove the four bolts and just remove the top plate completely. I replaced all four bolts. Stick a glove in the hole here, keep anything from falling in. All done inside for now. We'll head underneath, start working to drop the cross member here. First, pull the rear drive shaft, eight millimeter bolts on the back, and then put it really far away so you don't kick it and send needle bearings flying. Drain bucket, just in case anything comes out. I threw a jack stand under here to support the back of the transmission a while. Then we'll take off the transmission mounting bolts. We have a 14 millimeter here and two 15 millimeters here. On the bolt here, there's actually a nut right there. You need to hold with a wrench while you back that guy out. With the mounts out of the way, we're on to the cross member itself. I'm gonna rip out this middle bolt first. Then I'm gonna slide the jack stand in here, hold up this side while we do the rest of them. Same thing on the passenger side. I'm gonna take the bolts out with one hand and then catch it with the other. This bolt here's not doing anything. And then the jack stand's holding it up on that side, so I should be able to just, yep. Cross members out, and we'll take off the transmission mount itself. That way our transmission jack has a nice flat surface to go on the bottom of the transmission. These are 16 millimeter bolts. Now we have better access to our front drive shaft, so we're gonna take it off on the transfer case side. We're gonna leave the front attached, and then I have a massive zip tie, hold it against the frame, and out of our way. Next, this exhaust needs to come out. I was a little bit worried about it over there, but I can already see right behind the cat, barely hanging on right there. So that clamp's not doing anything. And then there's just two bolts up here, just past the exhaust manifold. These appear to be a 14 millimeter. We'll see about getting on them. And if we're gonna need to hold a wrench at the top, I don't know. I guess not. I'll probably unplug this O2 sensor. I was not expecting this to go that well. Let's rip on that other one, see what happens. As suspected, that just fell right out. Nice. Now we'll start disconnecting stuff like the old master cylinder to slave cylinder line here. And then we have all kinds of connections on the transmission, just start unplugging stuff. No two plugs are the same, so you don't have to worry about wondering where they go. On the passenger side will disconnect here, just that one. And then I'll show you the rest of them when we have it down a little bit. Now what we'll do is come up here, take the starter out, and the lower inspection plate there. But I'm gonna disconnect the battery before I start messing with this thing. Starter's easy enough. There's just one little eight millimeter nut on one of the connections. And there's a half inch nut holding this power cable on. And there's two E12 Torx mounting bolts. There we go. Then we'll get our inspection plate off. 15 millimeter bolt with an 18 millimeter nut. Now before we get the transmission jack under here and start clogging things up, we're gonna take out as many bell housing bolts as we can. I'm gonna leave two of them in, the one here, and then the corresponding one on this side, they're 18 millimeter. And then there's a total of four more, I think, two on the driver's side, two on the passenger side. You can see two of them there. Get the crank position sensor out with two 11 millimeter bolts. 
tuck that away. These actually aren't terrible to get to. That's the topmost one on the driver's side that I'm on right now. Get cracked loose. There we go. There's not a ton of room, but there's enough room to get her going. And I don't know if I'm just lucky or what, but as soon as I get it cracked loose, I can get it the rest of the way with my fingers. It's not fighting me the whole way out, which is good. Now I just have the top one on the passenger side and then the two main ones I was talking about. Got that last top bolt out and I was just about ready to roll that uh, transmission jack under there when I made an important discovery. The only two things I didn't talk about when we were unplugging stuff was this vent line which plugs in right there and then this four-way plug that goes right there. And then I realized that I can just pull all this out, zip tie it to the seat rail and it's nicely out of the way for us. So when we pull out the transmission, it won't be dangling around. The jack is under here and strapped in. What I did was put enough tension on it that it would just lift up a little bit and I could slide the jack stand out. So now that that is secure, I'm gonna take out our last two 18 millimeter bolts on each side and we should be able to yank this thing out. All bolts are out. Let's see if we can give it a gentle but violent rear shove. We go now we'll come down a little bit because the transmission lever's sticking transmission is ready to pull out let's get our old transmission stripped down here now don't even worry about pulling off the slave cylinder and messing with these stupid lines this all has to come off anyway so i'm gonna loosen all the retaining plate bolts first and then loosen the bell housing bolts and just take it all off at once so the retaining plate bolts are 12 mil and i didn't drain any fluid out of this so an unknown amount is gonna start draining out the front. Then the bell housing bolts are 13 mil. Now I'm trying to preserve the gasket here. There we go. Gasket still intact. We'll just let that dry off, wipe it down. And that looks pretty clean. Actually, it looks like if we just plug those two bottom holes, minimal fluid loss. Got this cleaned up pretty well. Got our new retaining plate. We'll see how this gasket seals. I have some more gasket material if I need to make one. I got the two bottom bolts started because those are the ones that spew oil. I wonder if I could just tilt back on this for the temporary. I think that'll work. Yeah, that's working. Good deal. Get both of these started. Get the rest of these bolts started. Let's see if there's a torque spec on there that's worth torquing. We'll just go hand tight with a 3 8 ratchet. Now we'll put on our new used bell housing. Oh, that's an issue I wasn't predicting. There's a stud there and a stud here. One of them will need to come out. I think this one will just hammer out. Let me go try. Punch, hammer, vice, smaller punch, smaller punch engaged. Try that again. There we go. Then we'll get all these bolts in here and snug them down also. Now we're ready to put on our clutch fork. I already installed the new throwout bearing. And what we're gonna do is use some grease. Be easy on the grease. You don't want this stuff slinging up on your clutch disc and you know, not allowing it to clutch. So a little bit of grease on the ball pivot. We're gonna do a little bit of grease on the inside of the throwout bearing, just where it's going on the shaft there. And then just a little bit where it's metal on metal contact between the clutch fork and the throwout bearing itself. Just a little bit of grease there. And that's it for the grease. And then we can put this on all the way back like that. Then we'll take our retaining spring and somehow get it back there on the ball pivot to hold in the clutch fork. Oh, oh. There we go. And that's all we gotta do. This thing's ready to throw back in. Now for the most fun part of any transmission job, getting this thing lined back up. First, we gotta get the four wheel drive lever to clear like that. Now we'll have a look at our input shaft. I think that's about center, maybe just a little bit higher. I need to get behind it and push. Just loosen that strap a little bit. Get a little more movement out of this thing. Oh, we're way too high. All right, back her down. Just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna now jack up the engine a little bit to try and match the angle of the transmission. There we go. Oh, progress, maybe. I think we need some more height or jack up the motor to match the angle again, right about there. Let's give it a shove. There we go. 
don't know how well you can see it, but there's alignment dowel pins that stick out of the block that need to mesh up with the transmission. So let me see if I can push it in and wiggle it and push it and like that. Lock onto that dowel pin. If I'm quick enough, I can get one of our big 18 millimeters started and get it in there as far as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the passenger side lined up the same and get that bolt started. All right, we're actually doing really good. I got all the hardware started around the bell housing. So now I'm just snugging down these big 18s and just making them good and tight. Good and tight. Okay. Get the crank sensor installed before I forget about it. All right, now we're ready to get the jack out of here. First, we'll take it up to a reasonable level, get the stress off the motor mounts. Then we'll get our jack stand back in place at the back. Now we can go ahead and put everything back together underneath. Starter, drive shaft, skid plate, and the exhaust. It's gonna go in pretty much exactly as it came out. Let's get started. What we can do now is go ahead and get ready for our master cylinder and slave cylinder setup. Pop the hood. Throw some protection up yonder. Flip the hood back. Stay. So here's what we're after. Two bolts to the firewall. And then the line goes down. And there's some kind of bracket that's holding to. Right here's the line. Here's that bracket. It feels about an eight millimeter. Let me check. Yep. Oh, it was an eight. And that frees that up. And we already unplugged this. So now it's the two on the firewall. And then we got to get the linkage off of the clutch pedal. Looks like just a cotter pin on the linkage there. That's all there is to it. And it's just some half inch nuts holding this thing to the firewall. It looks like we actually have a straight shot at the bottom one here. Let's see if we can pull this thing out. Got that old master out of there, but ran into a little bit of a snag uh, with the new one. They're actually quite different. Uh, the bolt pattern doesn't line up and the line out of the factory one comes out of the top This one's coming out of the bottom. So I think we got the wrong one So we're not gonna have the right one for a few days I'm just gonna explain the rest because it's actually really simple from here um, Especially since this is a pre-filled unit. So there's actually no way to bleed this you just install it and it's ready to go so a couple notes is these little plastic clips don't cut these off or anything um, it's meant to be compressed when installed and then it'll break off when you push in your clutch for the first time Feed the slave cylinder end down into here get everything routed put that clip back where it was and then bolt it up to the firewall Hook up your linkage to the pedal and that's about it top side underneath is simple enough Your slave cylinder will come down here and then right where these two bolts are is where that thing slides in and then you can actually see it in there is the other end of the clutch fork which is what that piston pushes into tighten that up and uh you're good to go so i'll be waiting a couple days to wrap this project up but that's going to wrap it up for this one guys hope you enjoyed it hope you got something out of it take it easy and i'll see you in the next one